Hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Happy lunchtime. Um, as you can see, I am already getting started here. I'll tell you about it in a second. Um, but we are doing um, another dairy-free recipe this week. I think if you've been watching book cooks, you are not surprised that I usually try to make swaps uh, for dairy and grains for the most part. Um, so today we're doing a dairy-free one that also just happens to be gluten-free, but you can make it with gluten, it's no big deal. Um, I'm just using a gluten-free pasta because we're making mac and cheese. Uh, let's stir this. We are cooking today from Fix It With Food by Chef Michael Simon. Uh, you should know by now I am a huge Food Network super fan. Maybe not super fan. I guess I haven't watched that much. I started watching it now that I live here in a place where there's cable. My previous apartment didn't, so I kind of... Whatever. Um... <laughs> But I love Food Network. Now that I have cable, it's pretty much the only channel that I watch. Um, and I love Michael Simon. I think he's a great chef, good personality, love his food. And so this cookbook is just all about eating healthy. And if you find that you have inflammation or symptoms of chronic illnesses, um, he's kind of tackling different chapters in this book. What about if you can't eat meat for health reasons or dairy or gluten um, or sugar? you know, things that could cause gut issues or inflammation. But true to him being an iron chef, the recipes don't sacrifice anything in terms of flavor and content. So, um, oh, I just realized that the one that we're making is on the cover. Mine is not going to look like this at all. Um, this is a roasted vegetable mac and cheese. Um, what you're supposed to do is turn your oven to 500 degrees. It is hot out today. It is sunny and it is hot and it is very warm in my kitchen. Even though I have the fan going and I don't have the oven on, it's still like 76 degrees in my kitchen and 65% humidity according to my thermometer. Um, so that's just from having this on and our air isn't on yet. It usually kicks on around this temperature. Anyway, relief is coming soon. <laughs> so, and I don't have um, tomatoes. I have this yellow squash because it was in my freezer. Um, but you're supposed to roast tomatoes and zucchini, the yellow squash, same thing, fine, um, until it chars a little bit. I do not want to turn the oven on to 500 degrees today. So, um, I'm going to try to get some color in the pan. I'm going to weigh this down. I'm a trained professional. Don't do this. Okay, it's fine. Um, so there we go. Now we're getting some color. I just put some avocado oil in the pan. Uh, like I said, this was frozen, so a lot of liquid had to cook out. A lot of the water had to cook out of it. Um, so I just want to get some color on it. So now that the color has cooked out, I mean the water has cooked out, we can get a little char as if we were grilling or roasting this. Right? You don't want to burn it, you don't want to overdo it, but this is just some nice brown pieces on here. Um, and so this is kind of like our first step here. Actually, the first step was cooking the macaroni, which I have draining in the sink right now. You're going to cook your macaroni, whatever it is, gluten-free, grain-free, um, full of gluten and delicious. He suggests a rigatoni for this recipe. Um, and you're going to cook it until it's just al dente. You don't want it to be mushy because we're going to continue cooking it in the pan here. All right, I'm going to turn the heat off and let it sit to finish doing its thing. And so one of the big components of this recipe is he has a dairy-free Parmesan. Um, I am only making a serving big enough for myself. The recipe that is in this book and is currently on our website serves four. So as usual, I'm kind of playing a little fast and loose here, trying to figure out how to make it just one serving for myself. Um, 
But basically the dairy-free Parmesan uses nutritional yeast, which does have a really great cheesy flavor, and it's got protein in it and, and fiber. It has protein and fiber. It's like really good. Um, and cashews and garlic powder. So uh, I'm just going to use this little mini processor. I don't even know how I have enough content to put in here because I'm just doing a mini serving to myself. Please don't fall. Okay. So I have some raw, unsalted cashews that I'm going to go ahead and put in here. And I can't remember how like nutritional yeast I said I was going to do. Maybe like two, te two tablespoons, I think. And then I'll just try to, you kind of want to like use your food processor to chop it up a little bit. Um, oh, you should also add some salt and garlic powder. And get the garlic powder. Um, yeah, I don't think I even have enough in here. Just until it gets kind of sandy, like the texture of grated Parmesan cheese. Um, add a little bit of salt. a little bit. I don't need a lot because we are using garlic in this recipe next, so I'm just adding a, just a touch. Um, okay. All right, I'm going to remove these from my pan and set it aside. plug in my motor attachment, if I can get this to stay, there we go, technology, not technology, you know, all right, here we go, I'm going to turn this lower, it's up pretty high, okay, so yeah, so I've just got this little attachment for my immersion blender, We're not looking to make cashew butter, we just want to chop it up. And it will naturally release some of the oils from the cashews. Right, you can see it's getting kind of clumpy and sandy. We just don't want to make cashew butter. But that texture and flavor is what we're looking for. All right, let me unplug this and I'll show you what it looks like. Worked really well. I love this little mini processor. There we go. So that's kind of the texture that we're looking for here for your um, Parmesan. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is I have some garlic all chopped up. I'm gonna get that nice and um, aromatic here on my stove. So I'm just gonna use a little bit more avocado oil here. And I'm going to toss my minced garlic in there. I don't want it to burn. Garlic burns very, very quickly. My pan is already pretty hot from cooking the squash. So I just have it on low. All right, let me get that in here. And what we're going to do next is make um, a roux, just how you do with regular macaroni and cheese. Um, I'm going to use gluten-free flour. Hopefully it works, but you know, you just need garlic all over my fingers. Um, you just need fat and a flour to make your roux, which thickens things. And then I have a dairy-free milk here. So we just want to get to smell this garlic. We want it to get browned a little bit. So it's, um, not so harsh, right? Raw garlic is really strong and really harsh, but once you start to cook it, the flavor mellows out and there's that garlic flavor that we love without making you breathe fire, right? It's just a little bit. I can smell it, it smells great. 
Mm, yeah, it's pretty warm in here. Now that I've had the stove on for a little bit, now we're like like 78 degrees. Um, it's warm in here, so I'm really glad I did not turn on the oven. Oh, I can smell that garlic toasting up. Oh my gosh, what a smell. What a great smell. There you go, it's just dancing in the pan there. Um, so I'm gonna use a tablespoon of my gluten-free flour. Uh, my gluten-free flour, I use this blend from King Arthur flour. It's my favorite. So whether you're baking or trying to do something like this, well, we'll see how this works. But if you're baking, it just calls for a good all-purpose gluten-free flour. This just happens to be my favorite. It's made from um, rice and tapioca starch, potato starch, um, more rice flour, and then some vitamins and minerals. Um, typically I find that you do need some kind of starch in your gluten-free flour blends just to make them make sense. Uh, they just will not work out correctly otherwise. Let me get a spatula. Okay, so we can mix this up a bit. Especially also if you're using real flour, you want to do this because you have to heat treat your flour as well. I probably need a little more oil. Do like another half tablespoon. All right, I want this to be sandy, but I don't want this to dry, so I do need a little touch more oil here. Also, I mean, my flour might be more absorbent than a regular flour. I don't know. There we go. You see that? There we go. This is nice and thick, and it's what's going to thicken our liquid. So here I have hemp milk. Um, he suggests cashew milk or oat milk. Um, I had the choice between hemp milk and coconut milk, and the hemp milk has a much more neutral flavor, and I like the texture of it. Um, and I didn't want to use coconut milk today. So what we're going to do is we're just going to continuously mix this. We're going to get out um, any lumps from our roux. And you just want to keep mixing and mixing and mixing until this milk mixture thickens up. So basically you're just going to kind of, he says, continuously mix. Once it kind of starts to simmer, you should see it start to thicken. And I've said that before, you know, when we've made um, different kinds of sauces, whether it was stir fry sauce or even like when we've made mac regular macaroni and cheese once or twice before, um, it's not going to happen instantaneously. Usually once it boils, that's when you see things thickening up. So I'm just using my spatula here to break up the lumps, break up the lumps. Make sure this is nice and low. There are a lot of lumps, there are a lot of lumps. Maybe I should have used less flour, probably. So mine's getting nice and thick already because I don't have a lot of liquid in here. If you're following the regular recipe, you're going to have more liquid, you're going to have greater volume, so it will take a little longer to thicken up. Also, your ratios will be more correct than mine. Uh, but mine is already getting pretty nice and thick. There we go. This is pretty close. So let me let this finish up and let's see. So what we're gonna do next is just add in that dairy-free Parmesan style crumble that we made. There we go, this is nice and thick. Stir that in and also some hot sauce. I have Frank's Red Hot, which is my favorite. Take the blade out of this and just pour this in. Add some hot sauce. I love Frank's Red Hot. I use it all the time. Stir this up. Then we're gonna add back in the vegetables and my cooked pasta, and that's pretty much it. And you start to season it. 
uh, you can taste it. You can kind of say to yourself, all right, what's my, what's my flavor profile here? Do I need salt? Do I need pepper? Um, which I will need to because I haven't done any of that yet. I got a little more hot sauce. I like my hot sauce. This is a really quick recipe. Minus the, if you are actually roasting your veggies um, in the oven, which takes time. Add some salt and some pepper. Right now, the only salt that I actually have is whatever is naturally in the Frank's Red Hot and in my Parmesan but we need it to continue to bring out the flavor. I have some pepper that's probably too much. Fresh cracked pepper is pretty strong. And I'm gonna get my pasta. because you know I like to have a balanced meal and have protein. So I'm going to pull this off the heat. And I'm going to go actually grab my protein. Um, I have canned chicken and I feel like that would taste amazing in this. Right, this is from Trader Joe's. There's nothing in it, no additives, no soy, no starch, nothing. Super good for you. All right. Can opener. Yeah, this is a really quick, quick, quick recipe. I love it. I'm a big fan of things that come together quickly. I always keep these cans of chicken around for our quick protein. I want to say you can kind of add it to just about anything. to measure it so I could track my protein. Um, how much was that? 1.7. Okay. So I'm just going to put this in here and mix it to break it up and to warm it up and incorporate it. It is fully cooked already, but I um, just want to incorporate it here into the sauce. I think I need to thin it out a little bit. I'm going to add just a little touch of water to thin it out. Turn the heat back on low. Yeah, I should have added less flour, but again, if you are making this, you're gonna follow the full recipe and I did not. And you're also gonna have the tomatoes, which also inherently have some liquid to them, even once roasted. So I'm just gonna warm this back up and then I'm gonna to toss it in a bowl. And that's it. A really simple, um, creamy, hits the spot for creamy, has a little bit of the cheesy flavor um, and just has some extra added goodness from the vegetables and the nutritional yeast to replace a macaroni and cheese if you can't have dairy. All right, let me go get my bowl. Okay. 
has got a lot of good things. I mean, I love my veggies. You should know that about me by now. I love garlic. I love cheese, but I also love dairy replacements. This is just a nice hearty bowl. this up a little bit. I cannot enjoy my food unless I tidy up my workspace, which you can't see, but it's messy. Okay. Tidy up a little bit. All right, let me grab a fork so we can taste this. of the Parmesan mixture that was still stuck down here at the bottom. And I'm gonna sprinkle it on top just like you would sprinkle some extra cheese on the top for texture and flavor. Okay. So here it is, it's not as pretty as his picture because my sauce is too thick and I don't have any tomatoes or the green from the zucchini because I used the yellow summer squash. Still gonna be good. All right, let's go in. Oh wow, it is really good. It is really good. Wow. This is really good. I cannot claim that this tastes like cheese, but between the nutritional yeast and the really nice zing from the Red Hot, it is kind of reminiscent of the feeling that you get from having a good mac and cheese. It doesn't taste really cheesy. It does have a little bit of a, a fun cheese-ish flavor from all of the stuff that we have in here, but this is good. This is actually really good. And then the garlic just warms it up and adds some of that beautiful garlic flavor and aromatics. Yeah, it's definitely, okay, I just got a pocket that was more sauce than macaroni and vegetable, and it is definitely kind of cheesy. Um, this is a great replacement. So if you have somebody in your family who cannot have a traditional cheese sauce for mac and cheese, this is really hearty and really yummy. Let me get a nice chunk of the squash. Mm-hmm. Wow. And again, make sure that you do season this appropriately. Get here. Um, because the cheese will, there's my air conditioning. There it is. Um, uh, make sure you season it with salt appropriately because that does bring out the subtleties of the cheesy flavor of the nutritional yeast. On its own, it, you know, vegans will tell you or dairy-free folks will tell you it does have a little bit of a cheesy funk, but it does need other flavors to bring it out. Like if I just put this on top of a bowl of plain macaroni, it's not gonna taste like cheese. Add a little salt, add a little pepper, and it comes alive. This is really good. I'm really happy with my lunch. This is delicious. I don't know. I guess I had my doubts. Especially because I didn't follow his ratios exactly. But as I always say, with cooking, you can kind of fly a little loose here. Uh, with baking, not so much, and today we were cooking. So I could kind of make it up, especially because I do cook a lot. So I kind of could figure it out on my own. What do I need to do? How much do I think I need to add? But um, I would definitely make this in the larger batch again. Um, like I said, the original recipe serves four. Um, mm -hmm. This is really good. I don't know why I wasn't expecting it to be good. I started this whole video off being like, I love Chef Michael Simon. I think he's a great cook. I totally trust his recipes. And I was like, I doubt it, I doubt it. This is really good. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and finish my lunch, clean my kitchen a little bit. Thankfully, I didn't make a big mess today. Again, this is a great recipe. It was really quick. You don't have to roast them in the oven when it's really hot, your veggies. You can just do it on a stove. Make sure you have a little bit of oil and a nice high heat. 
cook the liquid off of the vegetables first. Vegetables hold a lot of water, especially if they're frozen. Let them get brown. Let them char a little bit in the pan. Don't be afraid. It definitely adds flavor. And then the rest of it was really quick. Add protein if you eat meat protein. Otherwise, it's okay. You can just have this as a side dish as your macaroni and cheese. I like to add vegetables and protein to everything. So that is it for me today. I have no clue what we're going to cook next week. Stay tuned and find out. It's going to be a surprise. I will see you next time. I hope you all stay cool. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And I hope you get to eat a lot of great meals. Bye.